Why don't we start off at the very beginning and we talk about how this production came about, the decision to play the role, how did the production, this production, start? Um, well, it came um, from the idea that uh, Rob and I would like to work with each other, and um, thank you. You're um, I was trying to do uh, that discreetly, but thanks yeah. for calling attention to it. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, so we had a conversation um, uh, we had a few conversations about different plays um, and we eventually talked about Hamlet, both of us talked about it actually. Um, it's a part that has sort of been floating around uh, with, with me for a long time actually. When I was in Dublin and when I was 21 at the Gate Theatre in Dublin, I was doing Long Day's Journey into Night there and they, they spoke to me about doing a, a kind of doing a, a young Hamlet as it would have been then. <laughs> Not now, um, <laughs> and uh, and people have al always sort of said it to me even before I really even knew what exactly Hamlet was mm. about the kind of that it was sort of within within the kind of within the my remit as, as so to speak. Um, uh, so, uh, but you know, it, there's a right time I suppose to do it, um, um, and I always wanted to do it with with the right person and everything. And um, so uh, uh, um, Rob, has Rob and I have both a very similar um, <coughs> experience, I think, with Shakespeare in the sense that we both experienced it as y y young people, as children and teenagers. He did a lot of um, work. Um, he had his own theatre company rather brilliantly and um, did a lot of work with young people and as a young person. And, and so did I in Dublin. Um, uh, we did these um, drama competitions um, in, in, in Dublin where you do expri uh, extracts from Shakespeare and I always absolutely loved it. Mm. Um, but I haven't, for whatever reason, done very any uh, um, on stage um, in, m in my professional career. So, yeah, so we, we about, uh, I suppose it's about two years ago now, we, we started to talk um, and we kind of, over the past year, um, have slow roasted the idea of the um, of the of the what what way the production would be, which has been really nice. Um, mm. uh, very quietly, last summer we used to meet and just talk about it, which is a really wonderful, um, uh, really wonderful. Great memories of that, and a lot of the ideas that we spoke about in the summer of last year up in the Almeida rehearsal room or in the park or in the wherever we were a cafe it's amazing to see them um come to life and um uh yeah so we we just talked about what things we don't like and what we've seen and what actually what what we c if you're if you're going to do another production of hamlet because it is produced a lot what what it is that we uniquely wanted to say and um so i feel ge i feel genuinely very very proud of the the, the, the production Great, yeah. and we hopefully we'll find out a bit more about those decisions as we g go through the course of the afternoon. But ha having um, made the decision to play it, and as you say, it's done a lot. Mm. Um, do you, and it's your first time doing Shakespeare on stage, as you said, you've done some on, on TV and things. Mm. Um, do you feel a certain weight of expectation about it? You know, those sort of art feature yeah. articles of mm. here are the people that have done it in the past. Mm. And if you do feel that, what's that like? And how do you deal with that? Yeah. It's a really big question, actually, and um, I think because I hadn't, I didn't train as a, a, an actor, I did sort of youth theatre and all that kind of stuff. I think I, it's something I feel now very, very passionately about is that, that the idea of, sh of who Shakespeare belongs to and the idea of who the great Hamlets are, or the great, uh, an, 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 any, with any classical acting. And I suppose I, d I definitely had an idea that w things like, um, verse speaking and um, the intimidation of that, and uh, because I uh, because I, I haven't been formally trained, that, that maybe I wasn't in possession of something that that um, is required of you when when you're playing a part like this, and and I, I really think that's not true for anybody who who um, is looking to do Shakespeare or any um, classical te text. It's so about. Um, uh, it's so for the actor, um, and 
it has been sort of appropriated, I think, and there is a sort of way of talking about the way Shakespeare should be spoken that I think is dangerous and unfair and, and uh, spoken about in a very academic way. And um, I know that actors really respond to things when they're, when they're truthful. And of course, there's a rhythm um, uh, that you have to adhere to. Mm -hmm. But I think the very important thing to say is that there is a rhythm in every single writer that you w work for, that you work with. A new writer or an any playwright has a rhythm that you have to try and. When we worked on Noel Coward, there's, there's, there's just something that you have to slot into, whatever the rhythm of, whether it's a <coughs> contemporary playwright or Shakespeare. But for, for some reason, people talk about Shakespeare, that's, there's something that you have to find that's completely different to um, something else. And for that reason, I think we've heard Shakespeare spoken in a way that um, sometimes is a little bit of a photocopy of a photocopy. So yeah. you think people, actors maybe think that, that there's, a, there's a way of speaking that doesn't come from them, that because something has been praised before. So actually, the big challenge of it for me was to not be intimidated by that and to go, well, there is a way, because I do love words. Mm. I absolutely love words. And I do think it's really important to not paraphrase anything he says or to, to, to follow uh, the things he says, but, 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 but also um, that, it's, it, that it, it comes from within and that the idea of, in this day and age, when people, um, well, when naturalism, I suppose, which is a, wor a dangerous word, I think. Um, but when people are people are engaged, uh, their hearts are engaged when when they feel like this is somebody who's speaking to them, and Hamlet is somebody who speaks a lot directly to the to the audience. And uh, I think it's really important that people simply understand the story and the man. Um, so yeah, I do feel I've, I feel very passionately that that uh, that. Uh, the uh, the actor is the inher the real inheritor of, of Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and moving on from that and talking a bit more about the the preparation for the role itself. Yeah. Are you you know you've had a number of friends and colleagues who have played this role. Mm. Uh, you, there are plenty of films. There are numerous, as you say, es essays. A lot of them academic. And are uh, did you go through any of that, or were you, did you shut all of that out and say I don't want any of that near my consciousness while I am? Yeah, dealing I with did this? more or less. I did. I looked <coughs> at I, I looked at something. I looked at um, some other Shakespeare on vi on video on YouTube and all that. <coughs> and I've seen some Shakespeare. I have some, some great friends of mine who played the part. But yeah, it is very much. You, y y it is about you. And I wouldn't I wouldn't do that if I was playing another part. Mm. I would look at see well, what that guy what that guy did. Because the whole point, I think, of being an artist is to to reveal yourself in some way. Um, but it is hard with Hamlet. It is hard. People, there is a pressure, and you think, oh, you know, people say these big things, and you know, you're playing Hamlet. Oh my God, that's terrifying, and blah blah blah. But the hardest thing, the hardest part of it, the whole experience, was learning it. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> there's, I mean, there's a few lines. Yeah. Right, Fifteen hundred lines. So I went to the, uh, I, I, I learnt it in the National Foyer, which weirdly I, I've learnt a lot of plays in the National Foyer. <laughs> um, I think to be just sort of in the theatre. Um, and on the very first day I started rehearsing, I rehearsed with um, um, uh, a, a young intern here at the time called Ryan, God love him. Um, uh, and uh, we went down and on the very first day, I was, we sat down, I said, can I meet you at 10 a.m. in the National Foyer? And there was a Hamlet festival, I don't know if you probably saw it. <laughs> and there were six fucking red skulls <laughs> on something <laughs> with headphones on them. <laughs> and you genuinely could listen to Simon Russell Beale and John Gielgud and Rory Kinnear and like all the f people before. And I was like, this is <laughs> something. So I didn't. Um, no, that's not true. I did. I listened to one bit of one of them. I won't say which one. I was like, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you just can't. You have to, blo you have to block it out. And I, I really do think there's no point in doing any sort of ar any artistic endeavor unless you put your own signature on it. We're not, mm. you know, we're not here long. So it really does, it, it isn't interesting I don't want to see it when I see other actors. I want to see who, what they, they bring. I don't want to see something. And I think uh, that endeavor is very exciting. And, yeah. and the thing that um, Rob, I, I mean, I, I have 
a such a profound respect for him. I think he's incredi incredibly courageous and um, uh, very, very sensitive in a very particular way. <laughs> um, but uh, and he he would say things like it's but Shakespeare. What well you're saying is but Shakespeare, and I know what he means because there is a sort of way of. I don't know. There's something that you do that you think I'm not really saying this. I have this li line in it um, at the beginning, which is "What looked he frowningly?" And I always think of that. It's so some things that Shakespeare writes are, are just so colloquial. It's just like something that anyone would, something that Simon Stevens would write, you know. What and, and rather than going, "What looked he frown?" in some sort of ri weird rhythmy way that you that you go that it's just such a naturalistic, there's so many just very naturalistic um, um, uh, ways of expressing himself. And naturalistic, I always think that people have an extraordinary way of talking. Yeah. And all the great contemporary writers are able to tap into that. They don't just say banal sort of TV speak. And actually even the, th but the way he, um, he constructs a sentence and the way the far reachingness of the play is just, it blows my mind every time I do. And so those early chats with Rob then, what, uh, talking about the, the number of lines that you have to um, uh, absorb, uh, and also I think one of the uh, really innovative things about this, this production for me, and, and hopefully other people will, will agree with this, otherwise I'm on my own, uh, <laughs> is, that, is, is dramaturgically that there have been slight line amendations mm. and, there, and there have been scenes moved or soliloquies moved mm. or mm. Um, it, to, to try and find a, a sort of new internal mm. logic to it. Yeah. And I was just wondering where in the process that began, how much of that uh, uh, were you involved in? Was it done beforehand, or and what do you get from it? Like, is there an example of something that you can think, oh, we moved that, and and here's why it's really helpful for me? Yeah, the the, the first act moves at a, an incredible sw sweep. Yeah, in our story, they have basically just got married, and uh, Hamlet overhears a lot of a lot of the stuff. So I think that sort of way that it just starts and moves on, I think, is, is, is very clever. It doesn't really alter, in a sense. It, it alters some of the geographical nature of, of, the, of, the, of the play. Yeah. But the idea when we see the ghost that he... Because there's kind of a few scenes where they sort of come... And, you know, in the original, they sort of come on. He goes, follow me, and he goes, I'll follow. And then they sort of kind of come jogging on. And it's, <laughs> it's quite <coughs> weird <coughs> way to... Way to, um, <coughs> to uh, uh, to stage it. Um, I have to say that uh, some of the stuff, um, of course, um, uh, was, was both of us, but a lot of it um, is because of Rob. He has a very brilliant dramaturgical eye and um, uh, there, are, there, are, there are certain things we spoke about where to be or not to be comes. Our biggest thing in rehearsal was a famous play buzzer which was that, that you don't know, like any, when, a, when, a f when a play is so famous and you think, oh, here comes the ghost. We, it's very hard to unknow that we don't know that the ghost is going to, I is he going to come back? And you go, this guy could be here for the whole play, he could be a leading actor rather than going, he's going to go and then he's going to say this and then he's going to go. You know, that you go, the, the, the I don't knowness of the play has to be really, because that's really the, at the essence of the, 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 the central character that you go, I don't know um, what's going to happen. And you have to really unknow things with Hamlet because it's so, so famous. Yes. Um, and uh, that's why I think doing a unique, really going to yourself um, is, 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 is so important because um, that will give an audience something that's, uh, that's, that's authentic. You know? Yeah. I'm totally stealing the famous play buzzer. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, some of the other things, it, it, I think this is one of the, 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 the clearest and most interesting relationships that, that Hamlet has with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern as well. Yeah. And there's a lot going on in there. Yeah. And I find that really exciting. And perhaps you could, t it feels like there's a backstory. Yeah. And how much backstorying did you do uh, in rehearsals? How, where did that come about? And perhaps you could yeah, talk I, I love a that. little bit about that. I love yeah. that. I think sometimes what happens with the Rosencrantz and Guildenstern is that they're sort of the same character. Yeah. You think they're just always in two. 
and a Maka and Callum who play um, those parts are just brilliant at going, no, well, I think that, but I don't think that, which is the way you do. Um, uh, we spoke a lot about the, uh, the idea that um, why, does, um, why do they both have to be men? They don't have to be men. And the idea that it, 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 it that, um, I don't know, there's just things that, that the play gives up. He says, you seem to know, you would seem to know my stops. You know me. Um, uh, he talks about her, her hands, I know. But I think it, it w we, uh, I think in, in the play, I think it just means your hands, like, hello, welcome, and all the thing. But just that, that idea that, 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 that uh, and none of it did, none of it seemed to be, um, to be forced. Um, but we did like the idea that, 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 that yeah, that they, they may have been in a, uh, a relationship that was very loving. Yeah. And for whatever reason, possibly because of the famousness of, of his fame. And his, you know, he's, he's a popular prince. Yes. And um, uh, so that, that maybe it didn't work out. And I do feel like that with Rosencrantz, there is a, they are sort of polar opposites, Rosencrantz and um, I think um, Rosencrantz is quite a po politic uh, kind of character, so they do, um, we do, they do clash. Sometimes we really clash on stage, <laughs> me and Callum, <laughs> throwing each other around the stage. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, all all that is um, is is really important. I think that I think I I. I more plays I do, the more I think that uh, every play I do is about love um, and vulnerability of some. Uh, kind, but the thing that I'm most proud of in our production is that this—that's what's at the heart of it. Mm. Is that it's? I think Hamlet loves every single character on stage, including Claudius, and we spoke about Claudius uh, quite a lot, um, um, because he's the famous villain in the in the in the piece. And but that what what he loves Gertrude, he loves her so much that he does this terrible thing. But uh, it's interesting to, n to, to try and think about what his relationship with Hamlet would have been before this. Mm. And probably was okay. So how do you go in the space of three months lo loving your uncle, y you know, and then all of a sudden having to, to be confronted with that realization about them. Your heart betrays you you yeah. still love them and I do think um, that's what what the big conflict is he can't kill him you can't kill him I, I mean I absolutely hate guns I, as Andrew I, I just I, I just I don't find them scary and horrible and um, this one I certainly do and the fake one and, the, um, and that idea of violence um, it's just a, I think that has to really mean something yeah I think the idea of actually killing somebody, and I think after he kills Polonius, he's forever altered, as I would be. You can't just go on, and I don't think, and uh, be the same person. No. Um, and so that idea of e him loving everybody and everybody loving each other, and that Claudius and Gertrude, you actually in a strange way can understand, and she's found love of a different kind. Um, uh, so that, so that it's not just Hamlet that we're interested in, you know, because I think if, if, you d if you just are interested in the central character, it becomes a little, a little boring. And actually, in a, in a way, you don't understand the central character. And yeah. um, if, um, if, if you don't, if you aren't really interested in the nuances of, um, of, the, of the other characters. And again, with Ophelia, that I think I absolutely love. It was hard, very hard for, me and Jesse to understand what their relationship is because the nunnery scene is quite difficult. Mm. And I didn't want it to be misogynistic. I don't like it because there's a sort of whoa, sort of really thing that's very abusive that, and I still think it is, a, it, it's quite violent that scene even as we do it. But I hope that we're able to understand that he is the victim even though they're both victims of, of what their parents want, not what they want. And so they're experimented with like a little laboratory. Go on, you go in there and you do this. And they, if you genuinely love each other, that's a horrendous thing to do. Um, uh, so all those stuff are really trying to go from a place of love. And, and sometimes with Ophelia, there aren't very many places to show, show the love. 
actually, because you see a lot of the tragedy. So we've tried to put in little vignettes, I suppose, to sort of, because if there's no love, there's no tragedy. Yeah. Hence keeping you on stage in scenes that yeah, Hamlet wouldn't bit, otherwise yeah, just, be. Just, or just that in a room like this that you feel, oh, they, and that's what I say before I go on every, every night. I say, um, I say the word. Love. Yeah. Talking a little bit about... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> talking a little bit about uh, see secrets, secrets you yeah. wouldn't find out yeah. anywhere else. Yeah, you yeah. see, this is why we're here. Um, uh, talking a little bit about that that relationship with with Claudius and with guns, um, uh, and another rehearsal room moment. This in the sort of double soliloquy, yeah, uh, of of Claudius um, uh, praying uh, and and then Hamlet walking into that moment. Another innovation in in the production is that the sense that. Can they see each other? Can they not see each other? Are they occupying the same space in that mm. moment? Mm. How did that come about in the rehearsal room? And again, what, what, are you, what do you get from that? Because I think it's different to yeah. other productions. That's, that's uh, I suppose, the, uh, um, one of the scenes that people talk about most when seeing the production. And in a way, I'm sort of reluctant to, um, <laughs> to sort of nail that down in a way. Uh, we wanted to make it active, uh, that scene. And I think there the question that, that, in our interpretation of the scene is, if Hamlet is not there, then Claudius definitely did it. Right? Right. Whereas if Hamlet is there, is Hamlet seeing it? Is this something that is a figment of his imagination? Um, and in him being there, both those things can exist. You know mm. what I mean? Um, and I think that is interesting. Yeah, I'll agree. Um, <laughs> moving out of the rehearsal room and then into performing now. Yeah. It's obviously such a big role, and you're doing a long run, and the West End yeah. transfer. Second. Yes. <laughs> you can applaud, that's fine. Oh, you can. Thank you. The West End transfer has obviously been announced as well. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, how, I, obviously you're saying the word love before, before you go on, that's the preparation. Do, do you think about how long, how long the part is? How do, you keep, how do you condition yourself for a role that you know, you've done Emperor and Galilee and you've mm. done these big roles before, but what conditioning and endurance and stamina is required for a role like this? Or do you not, do you not feel that? Or is that not part of the... I feel it. <laughs> uh, it's really, really exhausting. It is. And um, it's scary. Scary. Um, uh, and I think it's about... Um, it's such a brilliant play. It just rewards you in a way because uh, if you're exhausted, as I kind of often am, particularly when we do it twice in a day, it's hard. Um, uh, the, the, the character takes exhaustion. It's a real gift, you know. It's, it, and it's, I, hate, I hate when actually say things are a gift <laughs> because it's just everybody <laughs> says it. But it kind of is because everything you're feeling, you can, if you're alive, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a meditation on living, really, that uh, actually we're at our happy n ha happiest when we go, I'm just going to be here now. And we'll think about later, later. And if, you c if I can be in the scene and just go, here I am, and I'm just doing this, I'm just doing this now, um, that you go, that, that, and not to think about the overreaching. And that's actually about being, it kind of teaches you to be present as, a, as an actor, if yeah. you're present as a human, and not to go, oh my God, I'm going to do three months in the West End. Because when, 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 you, when you think about that, you literally think, y you could literally be paralyzed with fear. <laughs> um, and sometimes it is hard, and you think, but actually the play um, supports it, because he is exhausted, and he mm. is um, so, conflicted and um, and I think what uh, the audience responds to is an, a degree of authenticity and to try and get away from um, acting in a way and to go I'm just so a lot of the time that's what I mean about learning it if it's learning and it's in your bones you can just kind of genuinely be here yeah 
And that's the only way of describing it. Mark Rylance um, came to see the play, which didn't make me nervous at all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, uh, he said afterwards, you know, what about that feeling when you're lying dead as Hamlet? You know? <laughs> and uh, isn't it a great feeling? And um, uh, I was like, yes. Because <laughs> you're sort of lying there and you think, oh my God. Because it does feel like, you, you genuinely do feel like you've been through a whole life. I know that sounds slightly dramatic, but anyway, we're on a stage. Um, you do feel like you, you think, oh my God, the beginning of this play seemed like so long ago. Mm -hmm. um, because there's something, and we have two intervals in it, and there's th it feels epic, which it should feel. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's why it's so wonderful. And this, this being in the moment thing, I th I, you know, I, I, the Hamlet that you've created is so capricious. It's so, the, the moods and the tones change and shift from moment to moment to moment. Have you got in your head a sort of schematic of this is where we're going? Uh, and or do you feel like there's a moment, can a moment capsize an evening? Like, you know, do, does it fall like a pack of dominoes sometimes? Or, or is yeah. it just this, you know, what you end up with at the end of the evening is, you know, has been achieved because you are going moment to moment to moment through it? Yeah, I think it's the sum of the parts, isn't it? Um, it goes, it, you know, sometimes it's funnier. It depends, like the audience, the, you know, if the audience are, a laughy audience, or if um, you know, if we have school kids in, you know, that was one of the best days where we had a whole matinee. And sometimes, you know, when you're tired, because you're dealing with a completely different audience when it's a lot of sixteen-year-olds, you know, you know, and you can be a bit like, oh God, what's this going to be like? Because they are so much more vocal, like, oh my God, oh my days, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the ghost comes on, and like, uh, you're like, and they're literally like that, and they go, and they. You know, they scream and all that kind of stuff, and it's brilliant, you know. <laughs> but it takes a bit of wrangling, and you have, to be, you have to be performing to who you're performing to. So you can't be like, I wish these were all just, you know, middle class people, uh, you know, who will just be well paid. You know, I always find that really weird. Like, this is, this is it. These, these are the people that were the thing. So, you, so that requires a certain. Um, and so when, when you're getting, re, 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 you know, this is the thing, oh, I got again the other thing about Shakespeare and people talking about, oh, you know, I believe it's, you know, three hours, um, 40. People still k keep saying that it's four hours long. It's not, it's never, it was in the first preview, but it's, it's three, three and a half hours. I don't know why that's important to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> that's Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, d uh, I have no idea. I don't know Good. what I was going to say. Ju ju or just that uh, each, each, th that for, sc for school shows, that, uh, yeah, that, that, you know, people, we live in an age now where people go, oh my God, I watched seven episodes of Breaking Bad or Mr. Robot or whatever last night. And people, if something is, if something is gripping and captivating, you will watch it for three hours, four hours. If it isn't, you won't. So it's our job not to cut it down to make it so that people get it, can get, the, an early bus home. <laughs> Our job is to make it as interesting and to, and to serve the play. And Hamlet is a long play, you know, and uh, the best, one if, if not the best play ever written. So it's very important, you know, they say about Rob that he's a sort of upholsterer or whatever they call him of, of, of work. But actually, I, I think what he, he, what he does is to really go, what is, what is the essence of this play of, or Uncle Vanya or or, and that is, that takes real courage to go, no, I'm not, it, uh, there isn't actually a theme to this production, I don't think. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the challenges of the character is that you have to be the lover and the avenger and the um, uh, prince and the son and the friend. And there's so many, that's why it's such a wonderful part, that there's so many aspects. Um, and he contains multitudes, and, 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 and if you just go with that part as you're doing it, then the whole thing together will be the character, rather than trying to impose something beforehand. And, uh, you know, it's something I really believe, that w we all contain multitudes. We contain multitudes within, within us, and um, uh, if you can just 
give ourselves a- access to that and try not to judge those different parts of ourselves. Um, yeah. Then I think, um, because there, but for the grace of God, you know, you go, what would, what would I do if I had to be put in that situation? I ha- you have to, you have to try and not judge that. Mm. And uh, talking about communing with the audience and and this auditorium in particular. Mm. Uh, those moments of soliloquy, those moments of, sh- you, you know, th- it really feels held. It really feels like you're communing with, with the audience from night to night. What, what, what are those soliloquy moments like from your perspective stood here looking out to those? Wonderful. And, and, and how does the audience feedback shift and alter them? And just so I have said it, what is the to be or not to be moment? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's, it's amazing. One of the things that I said, one of the first things that I said to Rob was about about the soliloquies that I wanted to be able to have, to be able to talk to to the audience. It was really important to be able to go, um, not to be like finding an X on a wall and saying it there because that's how it becomes live. Uh, Somebody, I, I said, am I a coward the other night? And somebody went, no. (laughs) <laughs> it's made me really happy <laughs> <laughs> because you have to sort of go, you have to really ask the question and um, then people think that they're going through a live experience and it's I- again about I don't know that they you go I don't know what's going to happen even though you sort of do um, so I love it I, I, I love the idea of um, of, s- of speaking directly to the audience because that's what he says I mean so much of what he says his advice to the players, it astonishes me. You know, trippingly on the tongue, anything so overdone is from the purpose of playing, whose end both at the first, <laughs> this is 400 years ago, and now was and is to hold the mirror up to nature. It's so, don't overdo it, you know, just don't bellow, don't, I mean, he tells us. Hmm. So it is, um, nice that that the audience in our production have really responded to that feeling of clarity and um and that they understood that they that they really go yeah i felt that i felt it yeah. and that's really nice to be or not to be um that is the question <laughs> <laughs> um it's, go- it's just uh, i don't really know what to say about it really uh can you feel a difference though in the audience, like, is there that moment where you sense the audience go, oh, this is the to be or not to be bit? Uh, uh, maybe a tiny bit, but I think it's really important to me that, they, that the audience understand what he's saying. Mm. So if there is that, I really try and go, um, it's really important to me that they understand what his dilemma is and 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 in this beautiful speech that they that this idea because it's again about mental health and um, which i feel like we're weirdly only in the embryonic stages of understanding that's something that he understood stood about uh, somebody's dilemma and somebody's terrible trauma wouldn't it be easier makes me upset thinking about it. wouldn't it be easier if i if i stopped it but i can't do that and that genuine um, uh, conflict that he has and the fact that somebody was able to articulate that so beautifully it's really important to me that, that the audience understands that beautiful thing because that's the purpose of art is to teach us how to live a better life that's all it is for um, and so that's the whole idea of the famousness of the play I feel ferocious about it. I feel like, no, listen to the play and forget it. And if the play is good, then people will come and see it and people will respond to it. And, and if we're authentic, then they'll, they'll come. And if we're not, then they won't. And so that's why it's so um, incredibly gratifying. It really is incredibly gratifying that people responded to the play, mm. to the production um, in the way that they have because... Um, that's what our job is.
Yeah. It's a it, it, it's a big transfer. He returns transformed. Mm. He's a very different, or seems to be, a very different character when he returns to the stage than the one we last saw when he left. It's one of those great mysteries. Are you mm. are you prepared to share what 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 for you is the difference in that in that big moment? What's happened while he's been away on that voyage? It's to me to me uh, without over um, explaining it. It's about it's about Polonius. It's about uh, the fact that he has murdered somebody. And that either makes you, uh, well, that alters you in some way. And I don't think it's, I don't think, I, I don't think there's a person on earth who could do that and be the same. Mm. And sometimes my frustration in seeing the, the role is that the, it just sort of continues on and that the, he's just like as if, uh, so, so that's what it happens. It happens, in, 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 but he, he leaves the day he kills Polonius. Mm. Um, and I suppose the question is, what does that do to his um, bloodlust? And I, I don't feel that he has, uh, I feel, feel that's altered. I don't, I don't want to say too much about that because, because I think it's delicate, but, but um, I definitely think that there's, he's altered and he's matured and there's a sort of an acceptance about death at certain, s at certain stages in the, sorry, that's in Act, in act 5, is that what you mean? Well, this is what I was, yeah. I was then going to, to, to go on to, and, and this probably is, a I don't want to spoil this moment, um, but the, the way that you handle that moment that acceptance mm. of death mm. is again very. Di we we do sort of step out of the scene mm. a little bit in that moment. In, sorry, in which part? In Act Five, uh, right at the end. Right. Yeah. Um, where did that decision come from? Sorry, do you mean? Do you mean? I am dead, Horatio. Oh yeah, right. Oh, yeah. That. yeah. I don't want to speak. I think it's a really beautiful moment mm. that I don't want to spoil. But um, but where did is there a way of sort of talking? I, is that part of that idea of acceptance that you just sort of strayed onto there, or mm. how how did that arise? Well, can sometimes what can happen is that twenty seven people die in three minutes <laughs> on the stage. You think, oh, they're gone, they're gone, and they're gone, and they're up there. Oh, 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 oh. Um, it's just a bit like, right, there you go. And you know, so if it's a play, about, I, I, they have, it has to be served in some way, the end. Uh, um, no, it's not, it wasn't, it wasn't like, it's just, it's just to give it time. It's just to give it time. And also there was a, bl there was a bit of editing around there. Hmm. So that we didn't frankly have to do a lot of poisoned acting. Hmm. You know, you spend the whole, these incredible things that he says. He says, Has it, had I but time, I could tell you. Because I, I, we want to know what he has to say, <laughs> in a way. Um, and I think the play is so much, what I was astonished by is how much the play is about theatre. I mean, I kind of knew that. But how there's sort of meta moments in it where you think this is a, uh, you know the play within the play which is in his thing but there's so much stuff about acting and audience he says you are the audience to this act you know it's all in there it's mm. in there it's not like a i don't feel like it's a radical interpretation of the of the play in a way i feel like it's what 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 he what he says um so so yeah it's, that's just another another facet of the play that i think rob has has seen and something that we spoke about and that you go, what's the feeling of that? And I think the idea of slow roasting, it really helps you with that because you're not going, okay, right, um, what, what, you know, there isn't, there isn't that pressure. To that. So th there's really something to be said about that to go, well, nobody is interested. M people don't even know we're doing the play, I don't think, for a, for a lot of the time we were talking about it. Mm. So there was no pressure apart from just being genuinely creative and going, what we what we talk about and what 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 does he like and what do I like and what do we not want to do and uh, that's really um, amazing. Mm. So uh, please Thank join me in much. thanking Andrew Thank Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much again. Thanks so much.